Hi, this is Tom with the community team and in this video tutorial in the Getting Started series we're going to take a look at Layer 3, NAT and DHCP. In the previous installment I covered how to set up your management interface, prepare your licenses, uh, download updates and creating your first security policy. So if you haven't seen that video yet, please pause this one and go take a look at that one first as it might be helpful uh, in continuing in this one. Let's first take a look at our setup. The last time we were using a VWire, which meant that the external IP address would be used on the inside by our clients. Now we're going to be setting up the firewall in layer 3. It's going to have an external IP address using the IP range provided to you by your ISP and an internal IP address in the private address space. So one of the first things we'll need to do is prepare our interfaces, set up NAT and add routing. The first thing we're going to do is change our security zones so we can reuse them. Right now we already have a security policy that we installed last time. So if you now go to Network and Zones, you'll see that these are assigned to the virtual wire. So the first thing we're going to do is go into Trust, change the type to Layer 3, then change the Untrust Zone to Layer 3. Now they're usable for Layer 3 interfaces. Next step, we go to the interfaces and change them into layer 3. Right now, they're both still V-wires. So interface 1 is going to be our external interface. So let's change this into layer 3. The virtual router we're going to set as default. I'll show you that uh, in a minute. And then the security zone is going to be untrust. In the IPv4 tab, we can change the IP address. So we're going to change that to 198.51.100.2 slash 28. And then we're going to repeat that step for interface 2. So we're going to change this into a layer 3 interface. We're going to set this to the default virtual router and add it to the trust zone. Then in IPv4, the IP address is going to be 10.0.0.1 slash 24 subnet. And also in the advanced tab, we're going to create a management profile. This is going to allow us to ping the interface uh, in case we need to do some troubleshooting. The next step is, co is to configure the virtual router over here. And the initial one is called default, but you can rename it into whatever you need. Uh, plus you can create uh, additional virtual routers, which allows you to have multiple routing tables assigned to specific interfaces, segregating these interfaces from each other. Right now, we'll just stick to uh, this single one, since we only have two interfaces. And we are going to create a default route which your firewall is going to need to get out to the internet. So we're going to name it default route. The destination is going to be 0.0.0.0 slash 0, which basically means everything that you don't have connected locally or have a different route for, send it out to this next hop. The interface is going to be 1 slash 1 because that's the untrust interface. The next hop will be an IP address. You can set uh, routing to a different virtual router, you can discard routes or you can do some other stuff. Right now we're going to focus on a simple default gateway to 51.100.1 which is the IP address of the router upstream. Click OK and OK. Next up we're going to configure DHCP, which will allow our clients connected to the local network to receive an IP address automatically. We're going to attach the DHCP server to interface 2, which is the trust zone. Mode, um, maybe a little explanation here. Enable will mean that the DHCP server is always on. Disable is going to turn it off. Auto is going to allow to detect if a different DHCP server is on your network. Say, for example, you have a Windows server that's acting as a DHCP server right now. Uh, it's not a good idea to have two DHCP servers serving the same network. 
So having this set to auto mode will make sure that the firewall is going to be able to turn off its DHCP server in case it detects a different DHCP server. Uh, the IP poll we're going to be using here is going to be 10.0.0.50 going to 10.0.0.250. We're going to enable ping IP when allocating new IP addresses, which will allow for the firewall to send out a ping request before assigning an IP address from its poll. This will prevent any duplicate uh, IP addresses on the network. In the options, we're going to be able to set a default gateway for your clients, which is going to be the IP address of the firewall. The subnet mask is going to correspond to the subnet configured on the internal interface of the firewall. The primary DNS, in my case, that's going to be an internet DNS server because I don't have an internal one. Uh, if you do have a Windows DNS server or something similar, uh, you might want to put your own uh, DNS servers here. You can also put any WINS or NTP servers in that you uh, require. If you like, you can also add some uh, custom DHCP options. Before we forget, we'll also need to delete the old virtual wire. We're not going to need it anymore, so we can take that out. The last thing we need to do is create a NAT policy, which will ensure that our clients on the local area network will be able to talk to the internet. This is because your external interface is using an external IP address that is routed through the internet and the local area network is using a private IP range that won't be routed to the internet. So we're going to start and create a policy, we'll name it outboundnet. The original packet is going to be sourced from the trust zone, it's going to go out to the untrust zone. The destination interface is going to be interface 1. We're not going to filter on any services and since this is a small and simple network we're not going to filter on source or destination IP addresses but you can do this if you uh, have multiple local area networks and want to split up your, your net rules. The destination, since this is going to be hide NAT which will hide all your internal clients behind one single external IP address being the one from the firewall we're going to take dynamic IP and port we're going to change this to the interface address, attach that to interface 1, and then this is its IP address. Go ahead and click OK, and commit this change. After this commit finishes, you'll be able to connect all your clients, and they'll be able to go out to the internet using your new layer 3 configuration. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave a comment, and stay tuned for the next episode.